All right, my name is Soren and this video is a story time video. I've never actually done one on this channel before, but since Germany went into lockdown again and its number I haven't counted, I don't know, everything's back to 2020 again. So I thought let's revisit the times before the plague and let's go back to 2016. This is a story about how I and the band got into the backstage area of Europe's biggest metal festival. Let's get into it. Now, in order for you to understand the entire situation and story and the big picture, let's go back and revisit the time in 2016 and prior to that. So, back in 2016, we had just launched the band. Some of you might know, some of you might not. If I'm not doing YouTube, I'm actually making music most of the time. So, my band is called Tyler Leeds and we had just started the band in January of 2016. This was launch day. We had no idea what we were doing. We played our first show, we had no recorded songs and we just started playing together like six months prior to that. So we were in early 2016, had no idea what we were doing and Freddy, our guitar player, came across a contest that was announced online. And since we were a brand new band, contests were a great way for us to just get ourselves out there, just play in front of anybody for that matter. So he sent it over and the contest was Deezer's Battle of the Bands at Hellfest in France. Now, we had just started the band, so we expected our chances to be picked to be next to zero because we didn't even have a song recorded at this point. The only thing we had was a recording of the first show, the first ever live show that we played on our YouTube channel, which is still up to this day, but that was about it. The sound quality is uh, quite something. It's camera audio from a live show, so it's what you might expect. You need to know that at this point in time in the band, we said we're doing anything. We're playing every show that comes along. If there's a stage, if there's power, we're playing. So naturally, we filled out our details and I had another story where I had to find an internet cafe on the train ride from a city to another city, which is next to impossible nowadays. But we managed to get everything sent over just in time to meet the deadline and it went out into the void and we expected to hear nothing. Time passed, we played around three or four more shows on the local level and when I mean local, I mean absolutely local, like 10 to 20 people in a room local. And while I was packing up my stuff to move out of the place that I had while I was studying, we got an email. That email came from Deezer and I opened up this email fully expecting to read something along the lines of, thank you for your application, but at this point we're not interested and please try again next year. But that's not what the email read, they invited us to come to France this year in 2016 and play a show at the biggest metal festival in Europe or maybe even the world. So the adrenaline rush from reading these lines in that email was absolutely real. Let's go back to the very beginning here. We had just launched the band three months earlier. We had just started playing shows, had no idea what we were doing. We had no contacts in the industry whatsoever. And here we were with an invitation to come to France to play at the biggest metal festival that we could think of. Again, the adrenaline rush was out of this world. There were a thousand things that were just popping through our minds that we didn't think about, we had no idea about, that we needed to figure out in the span of like a couple of weeks to prepare to play a show at this festival. Now you remember the title and you might think, you know, hold up, what about sneaking into the backstage area? You were clearly invited to play a show there, so naturally you were going into the backstage area. Well, the thing is, Hellfest is big, Hellfest is massive, and the place where we were supposed to play at is called Metal Corner, which is a tent stage which is still pretty big, it holds, I don't know, like 1,000, 2,000 people, maybe more, I don't know. It's still a massive thing, but it's on the opposite side of the real proper festival grounds where the main stages and all the other massive stages are. Which means that when a visitor is entering Hellfest for the first time, they want to turn right to the main stage and the other big stages where the other main acts are playing. We were playing on the left side. So in that email we were explicitly told that you will not get access to the backstage area on the main grounds or the VIP areas and all that kind of stuff. You will get access to the backstage area of the metal corner so you can load in, load out and you know prepare for your show uh, and that's it. And we were fine with that because that festival had a lineup like I've never seen before. You know, let me just show you the lineup here. Rammstein, Black Sabbath, Twisted Sister, King Diamond, the list goes on and on, it's wild. 
So we knew everything that we needed to know, we prepared for our trip and then we decided to book the tiniest big car that we could think of, which was this thing. Now we could have gone with a sprinter van because we had to carry camping equipment, our gear that we needed for the show and six people in that car all across France because we had to cross the entire country, but we didn't. We went with this thing, which was not a pleasant ride, but it worked. So we arrived on the opposite side of France and, you know, Clisson is tiny. And when this festival happens, it's as big as a major city. So of course there were traffic jams that were just going on for hours. We went through all of these, found a camping spot, set up, drove to the back entrance of the main stages and got all of our laminates and all of the bracelets that we needed to get around the festival grounds. So after a couple of hours, we found our camping spot and made our way to the festival grounds to explore the entire thing. Now, if you remember in that email, we were told that you will not have access to any of the backstage area of the festival on the main grounds. So we thought, yep, yeah, that's it. So we went through the public entrance and the public grounds and all that kind of stuff. We explored the festival, which was amazing. And then we thought there was another line, which said that there's one space on the festival grounds where we can get some drinks without having to stand in line. And we thought, okay, let's find this place. This has to be in the public area and we just, you know, I don't know, maybe we can skip the line or something. So we went to one of the securities and we held up one of these. This is the artist bracelet that we got for the day that we were playing. Now the security guy couldn't really speak English too well, so he sent us to another one where we went to the next security guy, held up our bracelets again, and he said, okay, come through. And suddenly we were behind a barrier. We were walking past this security guy straight through a gate that led us into, well, the backstage area of the main grounds, which we weren't supposed to be in. Some of us figured that, you know, we just got here. If they find out that we're not supposed to be here and they kick us out, we might risk our show the next day. So maybe we should leave. And others were like, okay, now we're here. Let's just see where we can take this. We went with a ladder option. Suddenly we were standing in the VIP area and you look around and everywhere is just this insane decoration. It's, it's completely out of this world. It doesn't look like planet Earth anymore. We were getting some drinks and there was another sign. And there was a massive sign in front of two massive stages, which are the main stages at Hellfest. So we walked straight across the VIP area right to the next security guy, which was in front of this gate that led to the main stages and we just thought surely not there's no way that we just show our bracelets and he lets us through uh, to the main stages but this is exactly what happened so we walked to the next security guard who was standing in front of the entrance to the main stage which was the stairs that lead up to the stage we showed him our bracelets and the same thing happened he let us through and suddenly the band that was just founded five to six months ago was standing on stage while Anthrax are playing in front of tens of thousands of people at Hellfest in France. That was one of the surrealist experiences that I've ever had. I still distinctly remember that moment when we took to the left and then the sea of people just opened up behind that waving curtain and I could see Anthrax playing from one side and they walked past this black curtain to the other side and there was Scott Ian and he was performing a couple meters in front of us. That situation and that feeling at that exact moment is still extremely hard to bring across. But I have some pictures for you and you can see how it looked right here. And there's also another story. Now obviously at a festival like this with a lineup like I've shown you, there are a lot of people that you know now, I remember that I bumped into Michael Poulsen, the singer from Volbeat, and then there is this clip. You see the guy with the straw hat? That's Julius, that's our bass player, and that's us. And we were just looking like extras from the wrong movie, standing behind, disturbed, while they were performing their hearts out for their version and rendition of The Sound of Silence. To sum this up, this was one of the wildest experiences that I think I've ever had just because it was so surreal. It just kept getting crazier every single meter that we made on the festival grounds. We were performing our show the next day and we performed in front of like five people. And here's one tip that I have for everybody who is thinking about performing at a metal festival in France. Don't do it while Gojira is performing on the main stages. 
that's what happened for us and naturally every single person in the vicinity of Clisson was in front of these main stages and basically nobody was in front of our stage but we still performed our hearts out it was amazing we had a ton of fun and I just figured I want to share the story with you because this is one of the well craziest experiences that I've personally ever had so that was the first story time video I hope you guys enjoyed it if you did leave a like and also subscribe to the channel if you want to hear more of these stories and uh, yeah, I guess I'll catch you guys in the next video, next week. We're returning to one video per week because otherwise uh, I'm getting my schedule completely messed up. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, stay safe, bye.